I am not a liar. I have killed thousands. I have fed more drug fiends than the top three pharmaceutical companies combined. I have stolen children from parents, wives from husbands, wiped out entire generations. But lying, that I have never done. The rest are offenses against humanity. Lying is an offense against yourself. I am the head of the Santa Blanca organization, which you call a cartel. I had a dream. I dreamed of a land where we could grow our own coca, produce our own cocaine, where we could run our business free from interference from the police, the government, the army, the Yankees. In my dream, a woman's voice asked me, Sueño, mijo, what if you had your own country? Like Moses, I led my people to the promised land. Bolivia. We came here. We bought the coca fields. What we couldn't buy, we took. We bought the police, the military, the judges, the politicians. We were on the verge of becoming the government itself. On the razor's edge from fulfilling my dream. Of creating a narco state. The nation of Santa Blanca. Francisco Ricardo Munguia. El Muro. The wall. The wall between me and my enemies. The wall between me and death. We were born hours apart in the same village. As boys, we were as poor as the rats that scrambled across our dirt floor. Our huts in the shadows of the hilltop mansions, where the narco bosses lived like conquerors. El Muro took a different path. He joined the army. Special forces. He rose through the ranks, helped to protect the local narcos, was paid in cocaine and money along with promotions. When we met again, Francisco, hermano, why are you still in the army? You and me together, we could rule. We will protect each other as we did when we were boys. We will share like brothers. El Muro was outmanned and outgunned, and he knew it. What do you do when you don't have an army and you need one? You buy one. Every officer, like every prostitute, has a price. Give it an sueño. It was the right move. I would have done the same thing. But El Muro forgot. Fear is always worth more than money. Our security infrastructure was being attacked. It made me question if La Plaga, our head sicario, was up to the task or if he was too distracted with social media antics. Are you too busy chasing pussy on the internet to do your fucking job? Or is fucking your job? No, Pifi. He's my brother, Sueño. I will keep him in line. La Plaga got the message. Too well. He doubled down. Whoever is behind this, know that we will find you. Know that for every one of us you kill, we will kill ten civilians at random. There is no such thing as innocent to me. The little pendejo had no idea how much damage he had just caused. La Plaga's response to the attacks proved he did not understand that the most basic function of a drug trafficking organization is to make money. What does your father do? He's a halcón. A lookout? Si. Sí. He hasn't been doing his job, has he? I don't know. Killing innocent people does not help you. Just the opposite. It alienates the people you need most. It sends them into the arms of your enemies. Who is really your brother? Tu carnal, the man you grew up with, 
fought with, bled with, grew rich with, or some guy whose mother got fucked by your father. La Plaga has gone too far. You know what you must do. I thought it was only fair to let Del Muro take care of his little brother. He would do it quickly, mercifully. Nothing like what I saw in the videos. I am not my brother's keeper. That's the Bible. That's God. Run. El Mudo chose to go against the word of God. El Mudo was going to try to kill me, just as I was going to kill him. Black is for vengeance. White is for safety. Gold is for success. Ahora, I ask you, how can any saint grant contradictory prayers from two different men? It has been my experience that gods always side with the man who has the most money, the most men, and the most power. I had lost the one man I could always trust, mi hermano. How many men would be more loyal to him than to me? How much power would he take? Would that be enough for him to take me out? I would always have an advantage, though. I grew up with the man. I knew how his mind worked. I knew his next move before he did. I just had to be patient. My security forces were shattered. I was a king without an army. My generals were dead or captured. I had no defenses. No armor. What use was a gun without a loyal hand to hold it? I had lost the only man I ever considered a friend. And when I asked my partners in Mexico for more sicarios, they refused. I would try to recruit from the gangs in El Salvador and Honduras. One man's war zone is another man's talent pool. But it would take time to train them, to cultivate them time I would spend with a target on my back, waiting for someone else to come for the crown. All priests like to hear themselves talk, don't they? But as the saying goes, talk is cheap. El Cardenal knew this was true. His people were barely surviving, and he wanted to do something. He had to help those in need. He didn't care where the support came from. But there were others who thought he was making deals with the devil. He was cast out. He lost his family, his friends. Lo perdió todo. When I found him, he was a broken man. I brought him into Santa Blanca to preach the truth of the new faith. For we are wed to death from the moment we are born, and we must come to love her more than we love our lives. Sacred and blessed death, the goddess of darkness can free you from sickness and evil. Do you offer your heart and soul over to her? He baptized me in the true faith. He is my counselor, my conscience. I do. The only person I truly trust with my soul. Forgive me, Padre, for I have sinned. Speak the secrets of your soul, my son. Padre, I have lost the love of the people. I thought it was enough that they feared me. I was wrong. Me equivoqué. To win, I needed their love. Why don't they love you, hijo? Because you have not made them love you. You must hold charity events. Gracias, Patron. Mother's Day and the Day of the Children. You must provide hospitals, schools, everything the people need. Es tu gente. Because the Bible tells us, By his works shall you know him. Ramon Feliz, blogger, academic, internet journalist. All he ever wanted was to tell the truth. But whose truth? His? 
Felice thought that there is only one truth, but we know that truth, like history, is written by the winner. His blog slandered me day after day after day. Por supuesto, something had to be done. So, I hired hackers to track him down, and offered him a job. I explained that telling my truth was much more preferable. My truth kept him alive. All Ramon Feliz ever wanted was to tell the truth. Now he had more truth than he could bear. A conscience is a dangerous thing, mostly to the person who has one. Ramon Feliz couldn't live with himself. He was moments from taking the coward's way out when... It seems that in spite of his recent allegiance to us, Feliz still had one source who was willing to bring him information. Un chivato. Information I was now aware of, since I had people monitoring his every keystroke. It's a shame, really. If Ramon had known what was on its way, he would have gone through with the suicide. Shame! The whole world condemns you! Someone had leaked Ramon's story. Even without proof, the damage was done. Help me, Padre. You are beyond help. I can do nothing for you. Listen to me, old man. Do you believe that I could hurt a child? That I would risk losing my life's work for a small amount of money? Do you truly believe that? No, no, I don't. Good. Then you will hold a mass. Invite the most powerful and influential people in Bolivia. Defend me against these lies. Swear on the Santissima Muerte that what they say is false. You are not coming? No. I have business to take care of. The image was broken. The dream was crumbling. My church was dying out. Many of my men were leaving me. The campesinos were no longer afraid to slander my name. Those who hated me said I did all of this out of pride. The mausoleum, the websites, the Bible. They said I did it out of vanity. But if they could have seen it, if everyone could have seen my dream, they would have understood. I did it for them, for the sicarios, the farmers, the miners. I did it so they would dream of a better life for themselves, so they could envision how great they could become, how great they could make Santa Blanca, and how great Santa Blanca could make them. But when you get a glimpse behind the curtain, then you realize that the magic is nothing more than smoke and mirrors. And the glory which you once aspired to is nothing but a sham. El Yayo was born amidst the Bolivian coca. His mother carried him on her back until he was old enough to go to work for himself. For decades, Yayo picked the leaves, fingers blistered, back aching, feet bleeding. But never, in all that time, did he once extract the alkaloids to make cocaine. To Yayo, the coca leaf was an ancient tradition, going back 8,000 years, a medicine, a culture, una planta sagrada. Of course, the Americanos had a different opinion. They called it Plan Dignidad, the Dignity Plan. Although Yayo was no more than a farmer, un cocalero, his world was left in ruins. With no other means available, he was forced to do the one thing that he vowed never to do. He was forced to produce cocaine. In the end, the Americans' efforts to stop cocaine production created one of the greatest cocaine producers to ever live. Innovation versus experience. Technology versus tradition. Youth versus age. La gringa versus El Yayo. I had been hoping they would complement each other, but they could not get along. They were too different. I have been producing cocaine this way for years. 
That's exactly the problem. Our product was so good, the demand was only increasing. We couldn't keep up. I don't care how you do it. Science, tradition, or voodoo. Just make more. Or I'll find someone that can. Desperate people make desperate mistakes. And I had made El Yayo and La Gringa desperate. I pressured them too much. But I had no choice. The attacks on our production were increasing. It was hurting our supply chain. If something was not done, we would lose our market share. So I pushed them to produce more coke. They couldn't do it. So they started to cut it, dilute it, lower the quality to increase the quantity. An understandable mistake, but a mistake nevertheless. I had spent years branding Santa Blanca, a quality product, the best in the world, a primo price for a primo product. Problem was, the product wasn't primo anymore. And someone had to pay for that. I had told El Yayo and La Gringa to step up production. They claimed they were doing their best. Obviously, I had not been clear enough. This man's life was in your hands, and this is what you've done with it. I can't do this anymore. Please, just let me go home. I swear to God, I won't tell anyone what happened here. Sometimes I don't think you take me seriously. Next time I will show you how serious I can be. Great writer Balzac once said, to have a family is to become hostage to fortune. I told El Yayo we had something in common. We're both too old to start over. Me to start a new organization. You to start a new family. You cannot feed the hungry without food. You cannot heal the sick without medicine. And you cannot satisfy demand without a product. With the cocaine production in shambles, our market share was shrinking more and more every day. We increased prices, but it was a temporary solution. We would have to import from Peru and Colombia, invest heavier in meth and MDMA, a very costly and time-consuming endeavor. It would take years to rebuild. I had no choice. If workers were left unpaid for too long, there was no telling what they would resort to. But the biggest loser in all this was the people of Bolivia. Out of work with no means to support their families. All they could do was wait. Wait and see who was next to take possession of the coca fields. No more excuses. We want our fucking money ahora. Nidia will take care of this. Sueño, do we need to make a change here? Nidia has been one of our best people for years. Maybe too many. Maybe she's lost her edge. Over time, I had seen many buchones come and go. When you're king, you learn to lose a few nights. But Nidia Flores was different. I had taken her under my wing from a young age. She was the closest thing I would ever have to a daughter. She was my reina. If I fed her to the wolves, a part of me would die with her. You'll get your money, se lo juro. I guarantee it. Don't make us regret this. Sostén tu palabra. Her Santísima Muerte so loved the Santa Blanca cartel that she gave us her only begotten daughter, that whoever believeth in her should not perish but have everlasting life. Many years ago, we were in trouble, in La Desesperación, on the verge of extinction, being torn to pieces by the snakes and ratas. I believed that hope was lost, 
that it was too late for us. Era el fin. But just when I was ready to give up, it happened. Nidia Flores came forth, known to us as La Reina de Belleza, the Beauty Queen. And with her, she brought prosperity, wealth, and retribution. We feel her charity, su amor, deep in our hearts. As she continues to spread her gospel across the world, to every corner of the globe, praise to Saint Nidia, Queen of Queens, Reina de Reinas, Goddess among mongrels. Here's a lesson in cocaineonomics. The biggest mistake most people make is focusing solely on the product. Claro, you need something to sell, but that's not where you make the money. One kilo of coca leaves costs about $1.50. It takes 400 kilos of coca leaves to make one kilo of cocaine. Even when turned into cocaine base, a kilo is only worth 1200 in Bolivia. However, every time you cross a border, the value increases. Once we reach Colombia, it's already 2200 We hit southern Mexico, 12000 Cross the border into Texas, 20000 New York City, our $1,200 investment is now worth 35000 Paris, London, 68 to 74000 It's a pipeline that carries the product to the people that need it. Sustenance for the thirsty. Once in place, the pipeline feeds itself. Workers, vehicles, wages, brides. But when there's a clog in the pipe... Uh, they took out another shipment. We lost seven tons last week. Four planes the week before. The water backs up. There's too much surplus. We can't keep it secure. My men are selling to each other. We can't pay people if they're not moving product. They're kidnapping civilians for ransom money. Too much water. We have to take Valeria in gold. He'll kill us before we leave the country. Then what's the answer? When I find it, I'll let you know. And you drown. What's his name? He's a doll, Theo. He doesn't have one. You have to be alive to have a name. See, si, I imagine that's true. Nidia, mi reina. Yes, mi rey. You know this expression. I love you more than life. Claro, of course. I love you, my queen, but not more than life. Nidia finally had the answer to her problems. A convoy. The investors in Mexico wanted their money. This whole time she had been trying to sneak it out to them. Why sneak when we can force it through? Reinforced armor, heavily armed, multiple trucks, helicopter patrols, carrying 17 billion dollars. Mira, you can't be serious. If we lose that money, it's over. But when we're killed, what happens to Valeria? There is no other way. No, Reina, we're not doing it. Ay, boquita, corazón. I'm not asking. I'm telling. And who do you expect to lead this convoy? You're the only man I trust with something this important. But what if I don't make it back? I would never let that happen. Nidia Flores was in trouble, and she knew it. It wasn't just the drugs that were being attacked. It was the money, La Bronca. Money that was supposed to have gone to our investors in Mexico, and never made it. What are you gonna do? No excuses, no rationalizations, no nothing. Nidia knew she had to find the solution, before the solution found her. The Beauty Queen failed. In total, she lost more than 17 billion dollars. Nidia knew she was in danger. She needed more time. She needed someone to blame. She needed to make a sacrifice. I'm so sorry, baby. For you, Mirei. But it wasn't enough. You fucked up, Mireina. I gave her a head start, because I loved La Reina de Belleza, but in Bolivia, love doesn't get you very far. My trafficking network was dismantled. No more cocaine came in. No more money went out. The drugs that remained lay there wrapped in cellophane, rotting away, becoming worthless. 
My men wondered where their next payout was going to come from. I had spent years building these routes. Billions of dollars in manpower, transportation, relationships, all gone. Including the Beauty Queen. I gave Nidia Flores everything, and she paid me back by running like a coward, instead of dying like royalty. Now she would spend the rest of her life serving the Americans. She killed her child's father for nothing. Isn't it amazing? You remove a few buchones, and the machine falls to pieces. The dream is dead. If you're watching this, that means I have executed El Sueño. I'm certain that people will think I went crazy. That I did it out of emotion, that I broke. Fuck them. They're wrong. I knew exactly what I was doing. This piece of shit, this monster, tortured my friend, killed him. Decapitated my partner, massacred thousands. And he gets to walk? Uh, sorry, but not on my fucking watch. Given what El Sueño knew about Ricky Sandoval, he would have been unstoppable. Trivia question. What happens when you give immunity to a drug lord? Ding, ding, ding. You get a dictator. Taking out a drug lord is one thing, but stopping a dictator? You need a few more than four operators for that. My career, my freedom, my life is not worth more than the people of South America. Obviously, not everyone agrees, which is why I'm most likely now in a federal correctional institute, getting three hots in a cot for the next 45 to life for murder. By now, CIA has probably released an official statement saying, the case officer in question is no longer employed by this agency and acted in direct opposition to her superiors. Her actions have caused great harm to the continued efforts of the intelligence community here and abroad. And guess what? They're right. I would have done the same thing as them. No hard feelings here. I just hope they don't leave Bolivia. Without Pakitari, the rebellion will tear itself apart with infighting. Unidad will make a deal with the next criminal organization that comes along. And the remains of Santa Blanca will split off and form new mini-cartels. All with shitty names like Nueva Frontera Cartel, Berrio Familia and Los Hijos del Sueño. Everyone will continue killing each other for that coca. I wonder, if God knew all the destruction that this little leaf would bring, would she have still created it? Or maybe that's exactly why she did. I don't even know anymore. But it's no longer my question to answer. So I leave you with this. In the dying words of Augustus, founder and first emperor of the Roman Empire, have I played the part well? Then applaud as I exit. Bowman out. NOC Karen Bowman, Plan Bolivia After Action Report. Officially, Operation Kingslayer was a success. The Santa Blanca drug cartel was dismantled, Unidad forces are severely weakened, and major shakeups are happening inside the Bolivian government. While the investigation into DEA agent Ricky Sandoval's murder continues, we're confident that those responsible have been neutralized. Most importantly, the man known as El Sueño is no more. He is now confidential informant number 38726B and CI-38726B has been a veritable goldmine of intelligence. The Las Manas Muertes cartel accountant gunned down by the Mexican Marines last week? That was his. The El Saif terrorist cell arrested in Austria a month ago. Him too. Those Corsican Mafia gunrunners taken down in West Africa? All thanks to the snitch formerly known as El Sueño. The deal is, as long as he provides us with actionable intel, we let him keep breathing that fresh, freedom-filled air. Obviously, he's not ratting out his friends. These are all rival groups encroaching on his business. But, as the old adage goes, the enemy of my enemy is still a fucking enemy. And what does he get in return? Aside from the elimination of anyone standing in his way? 
a luxurious three-bedroom condo in Pinecrest, Florida, along with free meals, a 50 buck per diem, and unlimited pay-per-view, all at the expense of our noble taxpayers. Of course, freedom is a malleable term. Thus, his room and board comes with 24-hour surveillance, live-in guards, and cameras in every room. Ever wonder how a former drug lord takes a shit? Trust me on this. It's not nearly as exciting as you'd think. And since most of the shit I say gets redacted anyway, I might as well give you a glimpse into my crystal ball. It won't last. Eventually, he's gonna run out of targets. And then what? No way CIA is putting up the money for a lifetime membership in WITSEC. Best case scenario? Mexico finally files their extradition papers and he ends up in prison for about a week before he disappears into the back of a suspiciously unattended laundry truck. Worst case, we just cut him loose. Maybe he spends a few weeks vacationing in the darkest corners of Eastern Europe before making his way down to El Salvador. He starts up a new cartel, calls it El Renacimiento, the rebirth. Spends ten times more on security forces this go-round, then makes his way into Peru and takes over the coca trade there. But now, he doubles down. Meth manufacturing. Heroin from the Middle East. MDMA, bath salt, steroids. If someone wants to swallow it, snort it, smoke it, or inject it, he'll make it, move it, and market it. Except guess the fuck what? I will be right there, waiting for him. Me? And my friends, those operators, the ones who can't be seen, can't be heard, and can't possibly exist, yet somehow still manage to haunt your dreams. Bowman out.